Welcome to the program. Thousands of holidaymakers have had their plans thrown into disarray after two recent security incidents at Melbourne and Sydney airports. But it appears there may be even more trying hours ahead for travellers. There are growing threats that Qantas is heading for the country's biggest industrial brawl since the waterfront war of the 90s. Three major unions are considering strikes and management's training staff to prepare for disruptions. 7.30 can reveal that the latest risk is over plans to change the conditions of baggage handlers and ground staff at Melbourne Airport. Connor Duffy reports. The performance in the last 10 years has decreased with Qantas. You only have to ask passengers. For the last five years, it's got tougher. In the last three years, they've been driving the brand into the dirt. We haven't even opened up dialogue with the TWU and the TWU is already threatening strike action and already asking for international guerrilla warfare on Qantas. There's a civil war looming at the flying kangaroo that could bring it to the ground. Qantas aircraft maintenance engineers have already voted to take industrial action. An engineer's strike three years ago caused travel chaos and cost the company more than $100 million. We had a dispute in 2008 that did impact on the reliability. And we're saying in the current environment with fuel price the way it is, with the uncertainty about demand as a consequence of that and the economic conditions, it is throwing oil on the fire. Qantas pilots have also threatened to strike and union sources say that while negotiations are ongoing, they anticipate filing for industrial action. At the heart of the dispute is outsourcing and overseas staff on Qantas badge planes being paid less than Australian workers. They're actually shrinking the airline. A young pilot joining today may not have a career in 10 or 15 years' time because the companies decide to send those aeroplanes overseas. Now another group of employees crucial to keeping planes in the air is inching closer to strike action baggage handlers and ground staff. 7.30 can reveal that late last month, Qantas filed an application to Fair Work Australia to change the employer of 49 Melbourne-based baggage handlers and ground staff from a labour hire company to a new company called Qantas Ground Services. TWU chief Tony Sheldon says under the new arrangement, his members would be moved to a new award and he says that means lower pay. If you're a part-time employee, uh, it's between $100 and $150 a week. That's somebody who's getting less hours than 38 hours. And then if you're a full-time employee, you're looking between anywhere between uh, 50 and 150 depending on your, on your shift uh, spread. Qantas says it's the opposite of outsourcing and would mean increased security and entitlements. Around 170 workers in Perth, Sydney, Brisbane and Adelaide have already moved over to QGS and Melbourne is the only place where the TWU is reneging on the agreement. The TWU is standing in the way of these 40 to 50 people who want to work for QGS, a wholly owned Qantas company, and have accepted the offer of employment which provides increased job security. The union says the employees only accepted because of the following clause in Qantas's application, which warns they may lose their jobs if they don't. If the orders are not granted, QGS will consider its available options, including recruiting a new workforce from the open market. This would mean that employees at Workforce International and Blue Collar would not be able to take up their preferred option of QGS employment at this time. In the case of Melbourne, this is the first time that a group of uh, the workforce and uh, people who have carried out work on behalf of Qantas have said, look, we're facing bad or worse options, but we're going to fight because we just cannot face our families. Handlers at Sydney Airport like Tom Kabarakis say they're increasingly insecure about their future. For me personally, this job security um, affect the whole family. You know, lifestyle will have to change for everyone. Um, wife would probably have to go back to work support the kids. Do you know poker? you know all in? That's what we're prepared to do, all in. It's all or nothing now. The Transport Workers Union 
represents 9,000 Qantas workers. It hasn't even started its wider enterprise bargaining agreement negotiations, but it's preparing for a major showdown. To have a CEO who congratulates them for their performance on one hand, then slaps them down and puts a gun to their head as they're on the ground, not a boot, a gun to their head, to say if you have less job security, you either accept it and take lower wages or I'll shoot. We can always do better. Qantas chief Alan Joyce has described the union tactics Qantas as kamikaze moves that would hurt the job security of workers. Has no right to drive our international customers into the waiting arms of the competition who are largely not Australian owned, not unionised and have few Australian workers. This is a recipe for permanent damage to our brand. Alan Joyce has confirmed Qantas is also getting ready for a fight and has been training managers to fill in if there's a strike. Independent aviation analyst Peter Harbison says the dispute could already be costing Qantas money. Whenever there's talk about strikes, there is an impact looking at uh, forward bookings because people tend to be a little bit uh, nervous about booking if they think there's going to be a strike. He says competitive pressure on Qantas means management can't afford to agree to the union demands or to face a protracted strike. You know, it's quite possible that even if uh, a strike did occur and it was uh, a healthy battle and one side won, as it were, um, then the problem wouldn't go away. But we're hopeful that sense will prevail and that people will agree to a sensible outcome for all the parties. But the baggage workers at Sydney Airport and potentially thousands of their colleagues are determined to resist a transformation of the company. We are prepared to fight with tooth and nails all the way, whatever it takes to keep our jobs. You know, it's a great company to work for, great people, great camaraderie amongst everyone, but we need to fight it for everyone. Connor Duffy with that report.